Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the pharynx. Pharynx is an important part of the alimentary tract and it is a muscular tube that is situated behind the nose, mouth and the larynx. So, this is the nasal cavity, this is the nasopharynx. This is the oral cavity, this is the oropharynx, and this is the larynx, and this part is the laryngopharynx. Its boundaries, it extends superiorly from the base of the skull. This is the base of the skull. It is formed by the body of the sphenoid bone and the basilar part of the occipital bone. Inferiorly, the Pharynx is continuous with the esophagus at the level of cervical vertebra 6. Here, here, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. So, at this level, we found that up to the level of 6. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here is the laryngopharynx behind the larynx laryngopharynx behind the oral cavity the oropharynx behind the nasal cavity we have the nasopharynx in the adult it is, it is around 12 centimeter in length posteriorly we have the prevertebral fascia over the cervical vertebra this is the atlas axis second cervical vertebra third fourth fifth sixth cervical vertebra okay from there, we will we'll get the beginning of the esophagus. Up to this, we have the laryngopharynx. Then, this is the oropharynx. Then, this part is the nasopharynx. The nasopharynx, oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx. Okay. So, this part is associated with that of <coughs> respiration. So it should be lined by the respiratory epithelium, that is the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium, that is the nasopharyngeal lining. This part lined by the stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, this lateral, all of the nasopharynx is very important to us. We have the opening of the eustachian tube. Eustachian tube is also called the it is also called the pharyngotymphenic tube, also called auditory tube. Okay, it has this part is elevation that is called tubal elevation or torus tubarius. Torus tubarius, this part. Okay, the tubal elevation. Salpingo pharyngeal fold will get the salpingo pharyngeal fold here. This is salpingo pharyngeal fold here. Folds of libeto belly palatini. Here we'll get, we'll get the folds of libeto belly palatini muscle. And we have the pharyngeal recess. This part is the pharyngeal recess between the roof of the nasopharynx and the tubal elevation along the roof. We have the nasopharynx. Okay. And we'll get some lymphoid tissue, tubal tonsil, nasopharyngeal tonsil. Okay, we have the palatine tonsil in the oropharynx. We have the lingual tonsil here on the oropharynx area, posterior one third of the tongue. This all lymphoid structure forms the welder's ring of tonsil. That is the first line of defense against infection. Okay, we'll go to the oropharynx behind the oral cavity. Vertebral level C2, this is C2, this is the axis C2, C3, C2, C3. Posterior wall is formed by the superior, middle, and inferior constrictors of the pharynx. Lateral wall presents the palatine tonsil. This is the palatine tonsil. It is in between the palatoglossal fold and palatopharyngeal fold. In the tonsillar fossa. It is enlarged in children. It is a little bit atrophied as the age advances. Okay. 
so presence the palatine tonsil in the tonsillar fossa bounded anteriorly by the palatoglossal fold and posteriorly by the palatopharyngeal fold palatal tonsil are part of the welder's ring of tonsil again welder's rings of, rings of tonsil is composed of palatine tonsil lingual tonsil tubal tonsil and pharyngeal tonsil we'll go to the laryngeal part of the pharynx lower part of the pharynx behind the Laring. This is the laring. This is the thyroid cartilage. We'll get the thyroid cartilage. We'll, this is the epiglottis. This is the thyroid cartilage. Here we'll get thyroid cartilage. Then we'll get the cricoid cartilage. This is the cricoid cartilage, thyroid cartilage, and the epiglottis. Okay. We got the lower part of the pharynx behind the larynx, vertebral level C3, C6 okay lateral wall has a depression called piriform recess that is present with the side here not very distinct here but we'll see it certainly piriform fossa is bounded medially by the airy epiglottic fold bounded by the airy epiglottic fold and laterally by the thyroid cartilage and thyrohyoid membrane. Okay. okay. We go there. Walls of the pharynx. The wall has the following there mucosa, submucosa, pharyngobasilar fascia or pharyngeal aponeurosis, muscular cord, outer circular muscle layer we must remember that gi tract we have usually outer longitudinal inner circular but here outer circular muscle these are the constrictor and inner longitudinal muscle here stratopharyngeus palatopharyngeus and the salpingopharyngeus these are inner muscles these are the outer muscles okay and we have the buccopharyngeal fascia that is outside again this is the superior constrictor muscle this is the middle constrictor inferior constrictor muscle we have one of the longitudinal muscle i am seeing here the stylopharyngeus muscle here okay and we have seen in your previous image the salpingopharyngeal fold underneath we'll get salpingopharyngeus muscle okay we got that okay here we are looking at the lateral aspect of the pharynx and muscular attachment. Here, pterygomandibular raphe. Here is the location for the superior constrictor muscle. Here is the location for the middle constrictor. Here is the attachment of the line. We have the origin of the inferior constrictor muscle. Plus, a part also coming from the cricoid cartilage here, lower part of the inferior constrictor upper part of, the, part of the inferior constrictor. This is the pharyngeal raphe. This constrictor muscle inserts to the pharyngeal raphe. And this is the rectopharyngeal space. It may be infected, especially in, in case of tuberculosis, you may have abscess here, rectopharyngeal abscess. The styloid process, we get another muscle, the stylopharyngeus muscle here, another longitudinal muscle here. Okay, we got that. Here we are inside the inside the pharynx. Okay, so posterior view of the pharyngeal wall is open. So what is this area? This is the pyriform fossa area. This is the pyriform fossa area. Okay, important importance is that it it has the its floor, lower part has the internal laryngeal nerve. So fish bone impaction, chicken bone impaction may damage the, damage the internal laryngeal nerve and that will cause a lo loss of sensation up to the vocal cord okay so this is important to, to know this is the pyriform fossa pyriform fossa is a part of the laryngopharynx this is the epiglottis okay this is the epiglottis and we'll get the palatine tonsil that is in the oropharynx here between the palatopharyngeal arch 
and anteriorly palatoglossal arch. Okay, we got these are the lingual tonsil elevation. I'm saying here this is a part of the Wilder's ring of tonsil. Okay, this is the nasopharynx because we are seeing the concha here, nasopharynx area. Okay, cona that is the posterior nasal aperture. In some type of congenital defect, there may be a membrane that may block the posterior nasal aperture, but it can easily open by a probe, okay, in the neonatal ward. So this may, may be blocked by the membrane, okay, in, in some type, in, in some neonates. Okay, this is the styloid process and stylopharyngeal muscle, very important, innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve. That is a muscle derived from the third pharyngeal arch. Okay, we got that. This is the epiglottis. Okay, we got that. Now we'll go to find out this constrictor muscle again, superior constrictor, middle constrictor, inferior constrictor. Inferior constrictor origin from thyroid oblique line and also part of the prequired cartilage. Okay, here. And the middle constrictor is coming from the hyoid bone. Okay, superior constrictor has many origin from the pterygoid hemulus. From the here is the pterygomandibular raphe here. Okay, even from the from the mylohyoid line. Okay, it takes origin. And these are the palatopharyngeal sphincter. That these are some muscle that goes deep to the superior constrictor we also call passavent rays passavent rays this help in sphincter mechanism of the superior constrictor muscle okay here is the stylopharyngeus muscle innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve here is the inferior constrictor look at that it is overlapping middle constrictor middle constrictor overlapping the superior constrictor muscle okay the inferior constrictor has two part one is the Thyropharyngeus, another is the cricopharyngeus. This part innervated by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. This part all are innervated by the pharyngeal plexus. Okay, we got that. So these are the constrictor muscles the pharynx, nerve supply, vagus nerve, all the constrictors, all of them constrict the pharynx during swallowing. Okay, and we must find out the origin. Insertion, common insertion is pharyngeal raphing except the lower part of the pharyngoesophageal junction, lower part of the inferior constrictor uh, that may not go to the, that doesn't go to the pharyngeal raphing. It actually encircles the lower part of the pharyngoesophageal junction. Other, all the part goes to the pharyngeal raphing. Okay, we got the superior constrictor, middle constrictor, inferior constrictor. And there is some gap between the base of the skull and superior constrictor, between the superior and middle constrictor, between the middle constrictor, inferior constrictor, between the inferior constrictor and the esophagus. Okay, we'll find out the structure which are present between those gaps. This is superior constrictor we are seeing here. A structure that is the cartilaginous part of the pharyngotympanic tube. Okay, we got that. That passes above the superior constrictor mass. Okay, we got that. And we got between the, and also we got this is the muscle, this is the levator belly palatine muscle. There's also some blood vessel, we'll go there. And here is the stylopharyngeus muscle here. Okay, between the middle constrictor, inferior constrictor muscle. This is the, between the, between the superior constrictor and the middle constrictor, okay. Then we have the middle constrictor, inferior constrictor, we have the thyrohyoid membrane, we have some blood vessel, nerve goes through this opening, okay, that is that opening, okay, we got that. Okay, these are the longitudinal muscles, like that of the salpingopharyngeus, stylopharyngeus, palatopharyngeal muscle. These two are inhabited by vagus nerve. 
but style of pharyngeus is very important that is derivative of derivative of third pharyngeal arch so it is inhabited by the ninth cranial nerve that is the glossopharyngeal nerve you must remember that nerve supply of the style of pharyngeus not by the vagus nerve but by the ninth cranial nerve or glossopharyngeal nerve Okay, so we got structure in the gap between the muscles in the pharyngeal wall. Gap between the superior constrictor and the base of the skull. What is that structure? What are the structure passes between the gap between the superior constrictor and the base of the skull? Auditory tube. We have the auditory tube we have seen in our previous image. You must get the auditory tube in this gap. Levator very palatine and ascending palatine artery. Gap between the superior and middle constrictor, we have the stylopharyngeus muscle. Should go there. Okay. And the glossopharyngeal nerve. That nerve also provides motor innervation to the stylopharyngeus muscle. Gap between the middle and inferior constrictor. This is the middle constrictor, inferior constrictor. We have the internal laryngeal nerve, superior laryngeal vessel. Here is that. Passage. We have an opening in the thyro, thyro hyoid membrane. We have an opening, and through this opening, what structure passes? Internal, internal laryngeal nerve and the superior laryngeal vessel passes through this gap in the thyro hyoid membrane. Okay, gap between the inferior constrictor and the esophagus. Inferior constrictor and the esophagus. We have the passage of recurrent laryngeal nerve and inferior laryngeal vessels. You must know what structure passes between the base of the skull and the superior constrictor. What structure passes between the superior constrictor and middle constrictor. Okay. This triangular area is also called oropharyngeal triangle. Okay. We have the muscle, nerve vessel passes into and out of the oral cavity. It is the oropharyngeal triangle. Okay. We got the constrictor, we got the longitudinal muscle. Okay, just discuss. Nerve supply mostly by the pharyngeal plexus. Pharyngeal plexus is getting contribution from the vagus nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay. It also gets the cranial root of the accessory nerve. Okay, that is blended with that of the vagus nerve. Okay. Blood supply of the pharynx, you must not remember, ascending pharyngeal branch of the external cavity artery is a very slender artery. Okay. Ascending palatine tonsillar branch of facial artery. Facial artery is also a branch of the external cavity artery. Dorsal lingual branch of lingual artery, that is also a branch of the external cavity artery. Cater palatine, pharyngeal, and pterygoid branches of the maxillary artery. Maxillary artery is a terminal branch of the external chaotic artery. Venous drainage, the veins from the plexus on the posterolateral aspect of the pharynx, mostly over the middle constrictor of the pharynx, and drain, drain into the internal jugular vein and the facial vein. Lymphatic, lymphatic drainage is important to us because nasopharynx area may be a site of cancer. Any part of the pharynx may be a site of cancer, especially for the tobacco smoker. So the cancer cell first goes to the rectopharyngeal and deep cervical lymph nodes. Okay. So deep cervical lymph node with the retro. We have the jugular digestic lymph node, okay, and the lymph node around the internal jugular vein. We got the blood supply, ascending pharyngeal artery. We have the branches from the facial artery, branches of the maxillary artery, okay. They supply the pharynx. Also, we get the blood supply from the inferior laryngeal artery, okay. Branch supply from the superior laryngeal artery, 
So these are coming from the super third artery and inferior third artery. So then venous drainage, they will go to the pterygoid plexus of vein, then will go to the facial vein and internal jugular vein. Lymph node, again deep cervical lymph node, like jugular diagnostic lymph node, maybe to the jugular omohyoid lymph node, that is also possible, and lymph node around the internal jugular vein. Nerve supply mostly by the pharyngeal plexus formed by the vagus nerve, clossopharyngeal nerve, and the cranial root of the accessory nerve. Plus, in this plexus, we also get contribution from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion. This innervation is mostly vasoconstricted. Motor innervation almost all the muscles of the pharynx are innervated by the vagus nerve. Okay, exception. We must not forget stylopharyngeus muscle innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve. We have another muscle, tensor belly palatini, that is further above, okay, and that is innervated by the mandibular nerve, okay. That we don't include as a part of the pharyngeal muscle, okay. Sensory innervation is from the glossopharyngeal nerve or nine cranial nerve, vagus nerve and maxillary nerve through the pterygoplatin ganglion. Taste sensation from the belly pula or epiglottis part or lateral upper part of the pharynx is carried by the vagus nerve. Parasympathetic secretion through the pterygopalatine ganglion via the facial nerve okay, and its branches. Okay. We got the innervation, pharyngeal plexus. This is mostly around the middle constrictor, but extend up to superior constrictor and inferior constrictor. And we have contribution from the ninth nerve, tenth nerve, and also the cranial root of accessory nerve, plus sympathetic, superior cervical sympathetic ganglion has some contribution. This is the style of pharyngeus muscle innervated by the ninth cranial nerve or the glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay, this is the lower part of the inferior constrictor. It is getting innervation by means of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Okay, we have some clinical note. It must be emphasized on that adenoid pathologically enlarged the pharyngeal tonsil, welder's ring of tonsil, pyriform fossa, very important. Foreign body infection may damage the internal laryngeal nerve. Quincy, also called peritonsillar abscess, very much acute condition, large swelling in the oropharynx area around the tonsil, and it should be drained. Killens dehiscence, in coordination between the upper part and lower part of the inferior constrictor, because upper part innervated by the pharyngeal plexus, lower part is contributed by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So, if upper part propel foot, lower part may not relax sometimes. And there may be some diverticular, especially in the peak in human, there is no diverticular, but there may be in coordination. Inferior end of the laryngopharynx is the narrowest part, and here foreign body may be impacted. Brachial fistula is possible between the tonsillar fossa and to the, the skin in front of the sternocleo, the mastoid muscle, because the second pharyngeal pouch and second pharyngeal group may be communicated. Sinus tract from the pyriform recess to the thyroid gland is also possible. That may be due to the remnant of ultimo bronchial body embryologically. So it must be removed. In that removal process, thyroid gland may be resected partly. Okay. And that's all about the anatomy of the Pharynx, if you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends and please support my channel. Please subscribe me and have a nice day. Bye now.